Wow. Okay, so I did not expect to make this video. I thought we were going to talk about Brady Kachuk and how the Nick Suzuki contract extension affects those talks. I guess we'll move it to later today, unless we have something else that comes up that I think is really important. But today we're talking about Vitaly Kravtsov, one of the most interesting players in the Rangers organization today, based off of where he was supposed to be following the moves this team made in the offseason. You saw yourselves what was a Pavel Buchnevich on the team, who was a really good, really capable top six sniper kind of guy on the right side, get traded to the St. Louis Blues for Sammy Blay, and Blay is not a capable top six scoring kind of guy like Pavel Buchnevich is. He's more middle six, bottom six kind of physical two-way depth. So the Rangers' right side got worse with the Buchnevich trade, and a lot of people were going out there and saying, okay, with Buchnevich out of the lineup, what this ultimately does is it gives a guy like one Vitaly Kravtsov a chance to break into the lineup and have himself a role. He's 21 years old, a right wing as well, 6'2", 187, left-handed shot, drafted ninth overall out of the 2018 NHL entry draft. You can remember that some interesting names went after Kravtsov in that draft, like Evan Bouchard, like Noah Dobson, like Oliver Wallstrom, like Joel Farabee, like Ty Smith. Kravtsov was taken before a lot of these guys, and that was mostly because in the playoffs that year as an 18-year-old, in the KHL, he was under a point per game for Tractor Chelyabinsk, which was a really impressive showing, and it's why the Rangers drafted him ninth overall, but Kravtsov was supposed to kind of be that guy to step into the lineup and replace Buchnevich after all this development time he has had with the Hartford Wolfpack, with Tractor Chelyabinsk as well, and then Chemla Chelyabinsk in the VHL. He's been all over Russia, AHL, NHL a little bit, and we even had ourselves some more controversy, I think it was last offseason as well, discussing Vitaly Kravtsov and how he was treated by the New York Rangers. That was a really weird interview that was done in a Russian sports outlet. You can go ahead and check out the video that we made about that. It was talking about how he was kind of receiving mixed signals from the team. Oh, they said they were going to do this, but then they did something else that contradicts what they said they were going to do. It was kind of weird, so go ahead and check out that video for a little bit of an extended look as to the foundations, I guess, of what's going on today, because Vitaly Kravtsov was supposed to make the team in a lot of people's eyes. The right side depth of the Rangers was not really the best, especially with the trade of Buchnevich, but if you had Kravtsov come in here and prove himself as maybe a 40-point guy, let's say he gets 17 goals and 23 assists, he's a 40-point guy in his first full NHL year, that would have been good. Good enough, right? Good to see this guy break into the league and do his thing. But, contrary to popular belief, Kravtsov was not actually good enough to make the team. He got sent down to the Hartford Wolfpack, and instead, the Rangers decided to keep Libor Hajek. And guess what happened after that? Well, here's a tweet from Elliot Friedman going over what happened with Kravtsov afterwards. I'm hearing the Rangers have given Kravtsov permission to speak to other teams in seek of a trade. Kravtsov did not make the opening day roster. Further to that point, this is what Larry Brooks of the New York Post says, Vitaly Kravtsov has refused assignment to the Wolfpack and is expected to be suspended, the New York Post has learned. Frank Saravelli says that Kravtsov is unhappy after failing to crack the Rangers' opening night lineup. He changed agents over the last few months, and his new agent, Dan Milstein, now has permission to speak with other NHL teams about a fresh start. Vitaly Kravtsov wants a trade, and it comes mostly based off of the decision to keep him out of the lineup and play him in Hartford instead of the regular Rangers. And this has kind of shocked Rangers fans, because when it comes to the way that these young guys have been treated, you take a look at 2017. Okay, Leash Anderson, 7th overall. You traded up with the Arizona Coyotes to get that 7th overall pick and get Anderson. What happened with him? You developed him weirdly, you had this up and down thing going on, deployment in the system was not really the best, and he wanted out and he got traded to LA for, what was it, a second round pick, which you used to select Will Coyle? So yeah, you turned a seventh overall draft pick to a second rounder. Does not seem like the best asset management in my opinion, but okay, at least it's only one draft. We'll see where the Rangers go next year if this 2017 draft didn't work out for them. Okay, 2018, who did they get at ninth overall? Oh my goodness, they got Kravtsov. So this is the second top 10 draft pick in a row that the Rangers have gone out there and sort of flubbed in a way where the player wants out. 
Hopefully this doesn't continue for 2019 because 2019, that was Capo Caco. And 2020, Alexi Lafreniere. You don't want those guys doing the same kind of moves now, don't you? But for Vitaly Kravtsov, this entire spectrum is so weird because the Buchnevich trade kind of signaled a new opportunity for this guy. You would assume that Kravtsov makes the team and gets a prominent role with Buchnevich out of the lineup. Lafreniere, they tried him on the right side. It wasn't really the best, I think. He really does play a lot better as a left wing than a right. Right side, you still have Capo Caco, though, and you would have probably had Kravtsov in that spot, too. But now it's a little bit different because they send Kravtsov down in favor of keeping Libor Hasek on the team, whom you could debate doesn't even really have a spot anyway. This is what Statboy Steven said, talking about Hasek back in August, saying that the Rangers, in his opinion, have zero need for him because on the left side, there was Ryan Lindgren, Keandre Miller, Patrick Nemeth, Zach Jones. And I get it, you don't want to lose Hasek to waivers. You never want to lose a player for free. It's just, is this the right move? Prioritizing him and sending down Kravtsov in the process, which in turn is also giving you a big hit to your right wing depth. Now, that's not to say that Vitaly Kravtsov is 100% in the right over here. It is kind of strange where he doesn't make the lineup and he's disappointed and he's like, yeah, man, screw it. I'm not even going to play here anymore. I want to be traded. I want to go to a place where I'm going to have a guaranteed roster spot because I'm so disappointed I didn't make the team. It is kind of like the second time this has happened where he went back over and refused to play because he wasn't given the roster spot. In a nutshell, it's probably not the right way to go about things, but it cannot be ignored that it is happening at the same time. Furthermore, it's a pattern that we have seen because Leish Anderson had pretty much the exact same thing the previous year. All of a sudden, you start to think to yourself, okay, is it just the Rangers getting really unlucky drafting guys that really want to be in the NHL and get kind of upset when they're not? Or... Is there another problem with the Rangers internally? Something with the organization and the way it treats its players? How much of this is the players themselves? How much of this is on the organization? How much of this is just coincidence? Because this is the same situation, just separated by a year. Leish Anderson was drafted 2017. Guess what? He got traded in October 2020. Now you have yourselves Vitaly Kravtsov drafted in 2018, now he wants out October 2021. It's the same thing, just displaced a year into the future. So, is it just extraordinarily coincidental misfortune, or is there a different problem at play that we haven't shined the light on 100% just yet? And I'm not even referring to the up and downs, okay, they want Libor Hajek instead because they don't want to wave him and they want to send Kravtsov down. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to just the way this organization treats their players. Is that questionable at this point? You know? Like, is it fair to say that Kravtsov could have been sent down? Maybe it is. Maybe he just wasn't that good enough of a player, but it's so strange when you look at it with the other moves in mind. They're trading away Buchnevich. They tried Lafreniere on the right side. It wasn't really the best. So now who else do you have? Who else? Now, all of a sudden, Kravtsov wants out, and the agent is going out there, talking to other teams, trying to sell his client to a potential new NHL home. Leish Anderson went out there, and was honestly a pretty alright player for the LA Kings. He was useful, serviceable, and he's still young. He's still got a lot of time to develop into anything more, if that would be the case. They gave up a second-round pick for that guy. Remember, he was drafted 7th overall, too, in 2017, so for Vitaly Kravtsov, if you trade him as well for, like, a second-round pick, then that would have been two straight top 10 picks in the NHL draft turn in the seconds that you don't really use in your lineup at all and just get frustrated and sent away. This entire thing is so weird, and we're gonna have to keep a lookout because this is now literally the second part of the same story we have heard a year ago, and it's a lot more interesting this time because everybody's talking about Jack Eichel, whether or not Kravtsov would have been included in a trade like that, and now that it's been revealed that he wants out, I believe his value has probably diminished quite a bit. So talk to me in the comments what do you think about Vitaly Kravtsov wanting out after not making the NHL with the New York Rangers. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.